In this week's video, we'll review the hard evidence and examine the question, will the bears be left behind? To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. Before you review a March 20th version of this chart, let's go back a week and look at the MYSE Composite Daily. As of a week ago on Friday, March 13th, we noted that it was a mixed bag. We had resistance on the top end, but we had not broken support. Fast forward a week later, we see that after five trading sessions, we continued to hold support and we broke back above this resistance level. So this opens the door again to the consolidation case or somewhat of a head and shoulders like pattern with this mess over here. This is consolidation and indecisiveness. Typically when we break from consolidation and indecisiveness, we get a big move in either direction, either up or down. Last week we were concerned about the bearish case, but we said as long as this holds, we'll try to remain patient. The bullish case has received a little jolt of adrenaline, and right now we'll keep an open mind, but the big picture favors the bulls at this point, and the bears are the ones now that need something to change. These are the intermediate term moving average charts that we look at on a weekly basis. This is what a full bore bearish look looks like 2007. The other side of the coin 2009, this is what full bore bullish looks like. The present day still looks a lot more like this. It should be noted, there's nothing particularly magical about these particular moving averages, and the market model uses numerous inputs in addition to these here. For example, these moving averages are longer in duration in terms of their periods than the previous charts, but the concepts are the same. The present day, the blue, the fastest moving average is on top. We don't have any moving average crossovers on this time frame either. Doesn't really look anything like a full bore bearish look with the same moving average here on the bottom. Here, blue is on the top. The purpose of looking at multiple time frames is the odds are most favorable when multiple time frames are aligning. We can apply the same concepts to shorter moving averages with the same concepts here. Present day, as of Friday afternoon, everything looks good with these moving averages. These are the identical moving averages on a weekly chart in 2007 here and 2008 here, which looks quite a bit different than a full bore bullish look that these same moving averages had in early 2009. The observable evidence, still, the vast majority of it, is siding with the bullish case. That can change, but we need to see some change rather than anticipate it under our system. Multiple time frames is more than just using different moving averages. It's also looking at different time periods. The previous charts were weekly charts. The market model also uses daily charts. Your daily moving averages here in the present day. Blue is the fastest. It is on top. Our slopes are going up. This is an improving profile. Contrast that with 2008 where the fastest blue moving average is on the bottom and all of the slopes are down. The present day in terms of the daily profile using these moving averages looks a lot more like this period this risk on period in 2009 than this risk off period in 2008. Using multiple time frames can also help with the reduction of whipsaws on this time frame. You can see that we've been up, we've been down, we've been up, we've been down. Bullish cross over here, bearish cross over here, bullish cross over here, and another bullish crossover this week. All things being equal, the look of this chart aligns with the longer term charts again. We would prefer to see 
a higher high here and we would prefer to see this look here morph into something that looks more like this. This is the chart we reviewed last Friday on March 13th with the basic theme of last week's video being we're vulnerable but there are reasons including this potential support here to remain open to bullish outcomes. Fortunately for the bulls, support has held thus far and the S&P 500 was up 20 points on Friday afternoon and had a very favorable week in terms of the last five trading sessions. Continuing with the weight of the evidence theme, this is what a yellow flag, not a red flag, a yellow flag divergence looks like between market breadth and the stock market. S&P 500 makes a new high in October of 2007 here, but fewer and fewer stocks are participating in this move. How does this chart look in the present day? The answer is much better. Instead of making a discernible lower high, we continue to make higher highs. It should be noted that for the most part, we continue to be in a consolidation type pattern, an indecisive type pattern. This is a tweet from Thursday of this week just pointing out where the market was trading intraday on Thursday was the identical spot that it was in in late December of last year. So we need to move away from the consolidation patterns either in this direction to feel better or in this direction that means conviction will return to one side of the ledger. Regular viewers know that momentum is also an observable form of evidence, S&P 500 weekly, when Williams percent R or the weekly momentum indicator moves into overbought territory after it happens, the probability of good things happening improves. You can see we recaptured overbought territory this week, as long as we stay up here, that is favorable instead of unfavorable. Using the same concepts, weekly NASDAQ recaptured, NYSE recaptured as of the close on Friday, March 20th. Just as we noted in last week's video that there's no law that says weak momentum that was present on March 13th can't improve. Another point to make here, there's no law that says the market perpetually has to stay in this trading range. Here's the look of the NYSE composite daily with high-low close as of a week ago on March 13th. And here's the identical chart a week later. One thing we know for sure, this range absolutely, positively will be broken it will either be broken to the upside or to the downside. And most likely when that happens, we will see a relatively big move because we've been consolidating sideways now for months. The NYSE composite was trading at the identical level it is today back on Independence Day in 2014. This is long-term consolidation. We don't need to anticipate which way we'll break. We just need to pay attention with an open mind. If we break to the upside, we have to make very few changes to our allocations. If we break to the downside, as we mentioned last week, we will start to scale back our exposure to equities. We also have our very long-term multiple year consolidation pattern and we are holding the breakout telling us to keep an open mind about the potential for upside as long as these levels hold. In our video from two weeks ago we pointed out these typical retracement levels here. It's normal for an uptrend that moves from here to here to retrace to this level, this level, or this level and then resume the uptrend. We came down right into the fibs and thus far have held at a logical level. Taking a peek into our ETF scoring model that's used by the market model, this is Germany, the EWG ETF, 
relative to the S&P 500. You can see we have a full bore bearish look in here, the probability of bad things happening for Germany relative to the S&P 500 is higher here than it was here. We've now reverted back to a full bore bullish look. It doesn't necessarily tell us anything about the future other than speaking to probabilities. It's telling us now that the probability of EWG outperforming SPY is higher today than it was here. We'll keep an open mind going forward and pay attention to the observable evidence. One of the logical inputs into the weight of the evidence equation is relative performance of sectors. Last week on the 13th of March, when the S&P 500 had just finished a week where it was down 17 points, in last week's video we said, you know, things like home builders, economically sensitive home builders, don't look that bad. Fast forward a week later, after showing this chart on the 13th, home builders gained 2.79% in the previous five trading sessions. This is the chart we showed on March 13th. Said it didn't look that bad, XLV in isolation, healthcare. In the subsequent five trading sessions after showing this chart, XLV tacked on 4.56%. This was the try to be patient with our stock holdings chart of small caps that we showed a week ago on the 13th, IJR tacked on 2.73% in the last five trading sessions. The March 13th chart of XRT relative to SPY said try to be patient. XRT in isolation gained 2.52% this week. Similar story with S&P 500 growth stocks, IVW, March 13th still looked good on a relative basis. Last five trading sessions, IVW in isolation gained 3.31%. This is the March 13th version of IBB. After this favorable look in the last five trading sessions, IBB gained 6.15%. These are weekly charts as of the close on Friday, March 20th. Stocks versus bonds. Favorable, but still very indecisive look. The NYSC, basically sitting where we were in June of 2014 on the weekly look here. A lot of up and down, a lot of indecisiveness and no progress. Dow Jones, six months of consolidation, all things being equal. The longer we hold above the green box, the better. This chart also improved over the last five trading sessions. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, short takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice 
and Shivaco Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.